In today's video, we're going to go over some more creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. You've made a safe place for the truth to be told. No one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. He heard of a comedian that came to L.A. And in his first year in L.A., he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane. That he was. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in Cannes. That, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. All of these deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It don't matter if you did your T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. I'm more the lines of the agreeing side of Cat Williams with this one. I do think that there's a lot of industry plants. There's a lot of people that get put onto this role because they are willing to do what they need to do for entertainment purposes. And they were basically brought up to become entertainers. And I also really agree that this year and years forward, I have a feeling we are going to have so much exposed information from celebrities and things like that. It just seems like it's coming out more and more being that we have so much more information right in front of us. We're going to start seeing a lot more truths revealed pretty soon. I don't understand why you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on. And then, I mean, it's such a simple question and it's haunted me ever since. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, ask yourself that question. Why do we have to pay to live on a planet we were born on? And who are we actually paying for the privilege of being alive here? Who made them the boss? Who put them in charge? You know? Think about that. I'm all down for paying for like internet and phones and TVs and things like that. But if you own property or a house, you shouldn't have to continuously pay for it. Like I own my own land. Well, I say I own it. I have land that is supposed to be mine, but if I don't pay property taxes, it can get taken away. What's your thoughts on having to pay to live, basically? The UK laser weapon Dragonfire recently destroyed an aerial target during a test trial. Most details about the design are classified, but the Ministry of Defense hopes that the weapon could serve as a low-cost alternative to missiles and rockets, particularly when combating drones. The Navy has spent months shooting down scores of attack drones and missiles fired by Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. Leaders have expressed frustration that the U.S. Navy is facing these threats without the aid of laser weaponry, or directed energy, generally. To date, certain versions of directed energy technology have been developed, such as Lockheed Martin's Helio system, but those programs have not yet been brought to scale. Future widespread use of laser weaponry in the U.S. military is somewhat in question. I am almost 100% sure if UK has this technology, America's probably had it for about a decade. And I really think that this is something that is being used in secret. It also makes me think that this is why we have other countries trying to reach the moon is because they know that America and probably a couple of other countries have specialized warehouses up there that they're working on this type of equipment with, and they're all trying to get a piece of that pie. But I could be wrong. What do you guys think? What do you see when I tilt the Apple logo on its side and duplicate it? I know what I see. I want to know what you all see. Now, there's a bite being taken out of the apple, which is a fruit. Bites are used when we use our Apple products. The original Apple computer sold for $666. And Steve Jobs said, what? How about letting his kids use Apple products? I'm sure we're fine. 
I'm sure we're fine. It's nothing. You guys, I'm reaching for sure on this one. When he flipped over the Apple logos, I did not really see much. I may be an alien. I'm not quite sure what I was supposed to see there. But it is like a slap to the face for a lot of people. I could understand completely with the price point. Everything is so symbolic when it comes to this technology. So it just makes me wonder why they did that. Was it for the mockery of religion or did they just coincidentally did it? I can't believe it was just a coincidence. What's your thoughts? Do you think this was actually done out of spite for religion? Or do you think this is some kind of symbolic message that they're trying to push out to the masses? You know neurodivergent people can unfocus their eyes upon command. We thought everyone could do this. Story of my life. Unfocus, focus, unfocus, focus. Unfocus. Like, does it look different? You can't tell the person doing it. That's how I performed well on the Stroop effect, Stroop effect portion of my neuropsychiatric evaluation because I had to read the color of the word, not the actual word itself. So I leaned back a little bit, I was unfocused. So that way it was too blurry to read the actual word and I just saw like a blurb of color and I 99 percentile. I never knew that. To be honest, I didn't know that this was a thing that certain people could not do either because I can focus in and unfocus. As I'm even speaking to you looking at the camera, I can focus my eyes in and out to make the camera seem blurry or whatnot. I, I just thought this was something everyone could do. I didn't know that this was a specific thing that only certain people could do. Another thing that I'm not sure if other people can do that I can, if we're just going to share information of what we can or can't do, I can make my ears vibrate on the inside. Like I can kind of in a yawning manner, make my ears vibrate on the inside. I don't know, can anyone else do that as well? Because this was a new one to me. Many people have a hard time understanding who God was talking about when he said, let us make man in our image. Many of you believe that he was referring to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three person Trinity. But I'm gonna show you who he was actually talking about when he said us and our. This doctrine is false. God is not three persons. God is one singular being, and I'm going to show you. Let's start off in Amos 3.7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. God does nothing without first revealing it to his servants. Okay. Now ask yourself, who else is God's servants? The angels. And remember, there was a certain type of angels who were human-like enough to be able to have sex with human women and recreate with them. The sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. You can even look up the testimony of Admiral Berg or Olaf Jensen who encountered some of these beings at the North Pole. They are human-like. Now we go to Job 38 verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Look at this. When he laid the foundations of the earth, what happened? All the sons of God shouted for joy. Why? Because they saw him do it. Probably because he consulted them first and told them what he was going to do. Right? He does nothing without first revealing it to his servants. Now we go back to Genesis 1.26. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Remember, he does nothing without first revealing it to his servants. And we know there was a certain type of angels that were human-like enough to recreate with human women, which means they were also made in his image and his likeness. Which is why he said us and our. He was referring to the angels. Now you're probably wondering, John, are you saying the angels had part in creating us? No. They just knew what he was about to do, just like in Job 38 when God laid the foundations of the earth and then they all shouted for joy. Because all you got to do is go to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. His own. That's singular. His own image. He didn't say God created man in their own image or our own image. No, God created man in his own image. Now, if we were created in his own image, what does that look like? Simply go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. So we know we have a spirit and a soul and a body. Three in one. We were created in his image and his likeness, and we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. What is your soul? That's your psychological, your mind, will, and emotions. That would be the Father who is invisible. 
And then the spirit. What's the spirit? The Holy Spirit. And then we have a body, right? The word became flesh. Look at this. This is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. You and I have diversities of operations. We are three in one, soul, body, spirit. But we are the same person. I'm the same. I'm not three different persons just because I have a soul, a spirit, and a body. It's the same thing with God. He's one personal being, not three personal beings. Not one time in scripture when God appeared to someone, did he appear to them as three persons. This is so, so false. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, oh, the church, according to the elementary matters of the world and not according to the Messiah, because in him dwells all the completeness of the Almighty bodily. King James, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness of God dwelt with us in a body. Look at this, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Let me repeat it. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Go look in all the newer Bibles. This is the NIV. It was changed from God was manifested in the flesh to He appeared in the flesh. Why? Because they want you believing in this crap. Do you seriously think the Most High needs help? Seriously. He's the Almighty. Look at this. I, I am Yahuwah. Besides me, there is no Savior. Besides Yahuwah, besides God the Father, there is no Savior. But when you try to separate them into three, or even just two, you're saying there's two Saviors. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Not just the Son of God with us, a piece of God with us, one of the co-equal, co-eternal, divine one-thirds of God. No, God with us. Whenever Yahuwah appeared to someone in the Old Testament, they saw one. I'm going to explain to you how the Father and the Word are one. I don't like making images, but pretend this is the Father appearing to you right now. Remember, we are three in one beings created in His image. What you're seeing, His physical appearance, is the Word. The Word is His physical manifestation, His being. Without a physical form, He would have never been able to appear to anyone. The reason it's called the Word is because when He speaks from His Spirit, the Father, there has to be a way for those words to be heard by someone, which is the Word. The Word of God. Do you understand it now? The Word of God is not a separate person. It is the words of God coming from God. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them for you. This is a topic that I had to pray about for a long time. Don't forget to like and follow, and I'll see you guys in the next one. A couple of days ago, I had a few people in the comments talking about whether there is more than one God or if God is just using a form of expression for himself. And I thought this was pretty interesting. It kind of just came up in my feed, and it was very ironic, so I just saved it. But uh, I, I don't know how to really take this or if I agree with it or not because I'm really just not sure what to think about this whole scenario. I more or less leave this in here for the viewers that watch these videos. They can talk about it in the comments, fill me in on their beliefs and what they think that the, the definitions and terms mean exactly. And with that, why is this guy not wearing a shirt? And does anyone notice what's on the right hand side of the video on the top shelf? If you see it, you see it. I'm not going to point it out too much more than that. <laughs> hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you see this graph here, you'll see that we've improved greatly. 16% of the viewers that watch these videos are actually subscribed, but still at 80% of viewers not subscribe to the channel, but keep coming back for more content. 
So to the 16% that are subscribed, thank, thank you, you so greatly. much. I've got this 3D printed steak from Redefined Meat that is meaty and fibrous, just like real meat, but 100% <laughs> vegan. And I'm gonna stick it in a Club Mexicano taco. I mean, it looks meaty. It smells meaty. It's got the layers of protein and fat that you would find in meat. And it's pretty juicy. I'm not gonna lie, it smells disgusting. But I probably would think meat smells disgusting too. So I'm gonna be open-minded. Right, now that we've loaded up our tacos, it's time to give it a try. It looks like meat, it smells like meat. Does it taste like meat? That is very, very meaty. It's got that umami flavor that you get when you sear meat. Banging. And as always, Club Mexicana, ta <coughs> Club Mexicana tacos are 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend giving it a try. I think I'll pass. The way he like pulled it apart and it was stringy, it looked like glue. That did not look good to me. Now, after he seared it and he cooked it, it actually looked kind of tasty. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't think I'd be willing to try this. How about any of you? Are any of you that watch this video vegans? And is this something that you would try? Because I don't know. Man was getting home from work when this was captured on video. So I'm standing outside right now, and uh, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but uh, his weird sounds are coming from that tree line. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I know y'all can hear that. There's no way you can't hear that. To me, that just sounded like an elk's mating call. I'm not 100% sure. It was pretty off-putting in a way, but overall, it sounded like an elk to me. What do you guys think? A lot of you aren't even dreaming anymore. A lot of you can't even remember your dreams anymore. You, and, and you, and you think it's normal. You think it's, uh, well, another day I, did, I didn't have a dream. Uh, another night I didn't have a dream. Well, I, I just don't remember it. Oh, well. Whatever. That's not an oh well and it's not whatever. That's a serious, that's a serious, serious issue. If you are not dreaming, if you are not remembering your dreams, that's a serious issue. You are under a spiritual attack. If you look into the Bible, God reveals messages that, that will help you and guide you in your dreams. And if you're not receiving those messages in your dreams, you won't know what's coming your way. You won't know the type of blessings that are coming your way or the type of harmful attacks that may be coming your way. So a, a lot of you that are not dreaming or not remembering your dreams, you are waking up between the hours of 3 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. Let me know in the comments if, if like this like really resonates. As I build my followers, um, I just wanna guide y'all. I wanna wanna bring some type of ease to your mental and, and, and help you shift and help you understand what you're experiencing and um, help you get through it. Peace. This individual may know what they are talking about because when they said that, you know, you know, if you don't remember your dreams, you're probably waking up at three o'clock or five thirty AM in the morning. That's almost spot on for me. Like I'll easily wake up at 3, 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning and I really don't have any dreams. Now recently, since I've been using the Organite Pyramids, I have had dreams. I don't know if it's a placebo or what it is, but they have been there and they're definitely odd dreams and I can remember them fairly vividly. And that's kind of new. So I'm wondering if maybe I'm able to focus that energy into the Organite and it's just given me the ability to dream again. Because to be honest, I haven't had dreams since recently in a long time. You know, there's a reason why Generation X, Gen X is the way it is. And it's not just because we had boomer parents that really didn't watch us and didn't even know where we were from 1980 to 1989. And in case you think I'm joking, at 10 o'clock every night, there, there was a commercial that would ask, 
Do you know where your children are? That's right. Our parents needed a commercial on national TV to remind them that their kids weren't home. Are your kids at home every night on TV? Let's focus on what I said in the beginning. There is a reason Gen X is unapologetically the way it is. And it actually has a much larger meaning than what anyone could ever imagine. Why is Gen X uncontrollable, unapologetic, rebellious, stubborn? The generation that feels the need to accomplish something, the rebels of the past century. Well, it's because we are the indigo wave. Have you ever heard of indigo children? Yeah, that's us. So what is an indigo child? The name is associated with the color of our aura. Now, not all Generation X is going to be an indigo child because the indigos are a wave of souls that volunteered to come and reincarnate here on Earth to elevate the vibrational frequency of the planet and disrupt the system. We are disruptors. And the custodians don't know what to do with us. They can't stop us and they can't shut us up. The indigos are extraterrestrial souls that volunteer to reincarnate here on Earth. Gen X is more special than anyone could have ever predicted. Indigos possess special, unusual, and somewhat supernatural powers. Indigos are empathetic, curious, and very strong-willed, often perceived by family and friends as being strange with a clear sense of self. Often they possess a feeling of marginality. They don't fit in. They have an innate sense of being reincarnated on the wrong planet or having the wrong parents. We are aware of this. Highly developed intuition and psychic abilities, even if they don't realize it. The indigo soul has this feeling of need to accomplish a mission. Even if you don't know what that mission is, you are aware on a subconscious level that you need to accomplish something, something big. You need to disrupt, dismantle corruption. And you see right through the bullshit. The indigos have special abilities and traits, as I've already said. Common denominator is also that they had a childhood that other kids did not. They experienced certain things that helped them be molded in a certain way so that we became the way we are. This rebellious spirit was sent to this planet for a reason. Generation X, when the wave of indigos came in, he came in with a mission to disrupt, dismantle, and take down corruption so that the rest of humanity can evolve. I'm slowly learning about indigo children. I've never heard of this before a few days ago, and I'm looking them up a little bit more because I find it extremely interesting. This is, like I said, new information to me. What are your thoughts of indigo children and also to the form that this video applied them to? Do you think that most indigo children are Gen X? Do you think that they're just more open-minded? What's your thoughts on this? You know what's crazy too? If you type in Illuminati backwards on Google search, yeah. you know what it comes up? What? So it's the, it sends you straight to the National Security Agency site. National Security, yeah. Agency what was that? Site. The National Security Agency site, fam. The For government. Wait, if you type it in? If you what do you mean? In, if you spell Illuminati backwards yeah. into Google, then the first link of what they'll send you is the National Security. Is that true? Yes. You can type it in. I type it in Google right now. Yes, yeah. Let's try this shit. Yeah. There's no way. Mm -hmm. How do you spell Numani backwards though? Uh, I T A. I T A. N I M. N I M. U L L I. U L L I. Mink. Oh shit. Mink. <laughs> what the fuck? Mink. <laughs> what the fuck? Why yeah. is that? Why does it do that? I don't know. Why do you think? Stupid. <laughs> National Security Agency sent. This is actually true. Mm -hmm.
Hey, I actually did this and it does bring up the National Security Agency. So I have a feeling more than likely the operator behind the web domain is probably playing around with the tags and they put Illuminati and Idenmuli on there, which is Illuminati backwards. It just to have a little fun, I guess, because it really does pull it up when you type in Illuminati backwards. Like it really does. Boss, boss, I call you gone. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland has got to be one of the best examples of all time of one of the worst examples of someone pretending to be a Christian pastor. I am appalled and shocked not only by his behavior, but by his following. People are giving him money, large amounts of money. And it blows me away. And what, what he's done now is now he's saying he can grow your hair. Listen, if you're a follower of Kenneth Copeland, this is your chance to get out. Right now, right here, today, this is your chance to get out of this. Something about Kenneth Copeland never, ever has ever sat right with me, even as a child. I remember my grandmother used to watch Kenneth Copeland on television, and it always made my stomach upset because he, he scared me so badly. I, I do not know why. He terrifies me. His image, his presence, it's just extremely off-putting to me like I really do not understand how more people do not see what I see when I see this individual because honestly when I see him I think I see what looks to be like a demon I, I just he just seems very demon like to me and I just never understood how people didn't see the same thing that I saw and I still see it to this day it's pretty scary and I don't mean to offend anybody that follows Kenneth Copeland. Maybe he does mean the best and he is pure at heart. But to me, very scary. And I'm sorry if I offended anybody on that. But with that being said, what are your opinions about this individual? Is this someone that you believe truly is a holy figure that's just doing the right thing? Or do you think that there's something mischievous going on and sinister? I'm sorry, NASA just found what? Yeah, what the actual hell is going on here? So there's been a video circling around, especially on Facebook, after an incident that happened at Minnesota Airport in the US yesterday. People online, of course, are going crazy talking about this, coming up with all kinds of explanations to what this could be. Let me show you the video right now. This clip was on a security cam at the airport, which shows something flying extremely fast past the security camera. And if you look very closely, this was at a gas station nearby as well. Now, trusted news sources, NASA, have come out and said that this is, you know, a meteor. Now, a lot of you will say NASA have said that, so you know what, I'm going to believe it. And yeah, fair enough. But there's also been a lot of other stuff going on in the news, especially in the US recently. Canada publishing documents about UFOs. Many more strange sightings all across the world in the last year, which has just been nuts. As I'm sure you know, there's been some crazy stuff happening that I've made videos on in outer space and that I'm not going to touch on it now because I... Yeah. But what people are saying online is that this meteor was going way too fast and traveling in a very unusual way for it to be a meteor, leading many people to believe it is something else. But hit that follow button, I'll keep you updated, and let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this. Well, you all know how I feel about NASA. Just because it comes from NASA does not mean that it's legit news to me, because I really feel like they fill in a lot of false information. But with that being said, I do think this year in particular, we're going to see more and more UFO sightings. I think that it's going to be a very heavy year of unidentified flying objects or UAPs, if you will. I, I just have this odd feeling about it. And as far as that being a meteorite, I really don't know. This is the first I've heard about it, and I've not seen any other videos talking about it since. So this is kind of a new one to me. What do y'all know about gang stalking? Very little in this world creeps me the out but gang stalking is definitely on that list and it's never happened to me for obvious reasons but i know a girl that was gang stalked for literal years i had a friend when i lived in daytona beach and she used to do really hardcore adult content until one day she was filming with another girl and a guy and it was supposed to be fake snuff corn if you know what snuff corn is it's where someone gets unalived during the act of what they're doing it was supposed to be fake but the girl ended up really dying both of the other performers in this act ended up going to prison for it. And the video somehow ended up still getting on the internet. Since she wasn't the one who actually did any of the 
choking, she ended up not getting that long in prison. But as soon as she got out, she started realizing that there were a lot of people that were really sketchy that seemed to be following her. Not just one, like a coordinated effort. And that is what gang stalking is. It's an organized group of people who choose a particular target and then just stalk the hell out of them. And this girl was so terrified that she relocated from where she originally lived to the state of Florida to get away from these people. She felt that I was a safe person and she told me all about this and I literally thought that this chick was just high. People say weird shit when they're high. Until one night, I saw somebody out digging around in the bushes outside of my window on my video surveillance. I ran outside with my pew pew and I grabbed them up and I had it to their face. She came out of the house and she said, that's one of them. That's one of the people that's been gang stalking me. I dragged the dude into the house and with a little bit of gentle persuasion, he told us exactly where the group had been getting together on Reddit and deciding how they were going to stalk this poor woman. After this situation, she no longer felt safe in Daytona Beach anymore. She got a bus ticket the next day and I never saw her again. But gang stalking is some weird shit, man. If you're doing that, go seek help. Before you get dragged into somebody's house, somebody like me. Hey, I had a subscriber the other day ask if I could bring up some stuff about gang stalking. It's a pretty crazy world out there, and the fact that we have so much access to certain types of forms of media, like this individual said, if this was a real story even, but like this individual said, the guy that was stalking her, one of the guys, said that they were organizing all of this on Reddit. There's so many online forms where just a bunch of people can collect and be a part of something so much bigger and can make a lot of things like this happen. And that's kind of scary. And that's uh, definitely be careful out there. If you feel like you're being stalked, maybe you should actually get with the authorities and have something figured out because this is a pretty dangerous world we're living in, especially when we have the power of social media. I'm here today to expose more on gang stalking. Because from 2014 to 2016, I was what is called a targeted individual in the gang stalking world. Most people have no clue this even goes on. And some of you may have already had this happen to you. I want to just expose what is it? Gang stalking is a strategic planned plot by a group of people to drive a person into suicide or incarceration or to an institution for the rest of their life by driving them crazy. Gang stalkers operate as organized crim criminals with very unethical tactics straight out of a intelligence psychological manual. And the way they operate on doing these tactics are almost impossible to prove and very impossible if their target is already on drugs because then they can hide under the guise that, oh, they're hallucinating or they're just paranoid. Let me tell you, this is very real, and a lot of people have died because of this. I want to reach out to the ones out there today that may have been through this and need help because the only way to overcome the trauma that comes with satanic SRA abuse, uh, gang stalking, is through the power of Jesus Christ and his healing that comes with his um it, with you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, getting inner healing and deliverance counseling is what made the difference in my life and why I'm where I'm at today. So God bless you guys. Reach out to me if you need help. If you if you truly feel like you're being gang stalked, definitely seek help. Don't just let it drive you crazy because if it can really drive a person to the brink of killing themselves then it needs to be addressed immediately. If you feel like you are being stalked or if you have any kind of like harassment happening to you at all times like this, definitely do something about it that involves authority and someone that can protect you because this could be quite dangerous. Was Yeshua real? And by the way, his name was not Jesus. I keep telling people this. The guy's name is not Jesus. Calling on the name of Jesus has zero power. Zero power and I will prove it to you I will pay anybody 
a hundred thousand dollars cash. One hundred thousand cash in their hand. I would travel with the money in a duffel bag. Let's go to anywhere on this planet, any homeless shelter, anywhere. And I want you to call on the name of Jesus to feed those people and clothe them and put them in the house. And then I want to stand back and watch and see what happens. Then I'm going to call on the divine source of power that's in my body and the blessings that I've been given through my own energy and action. And I'm going to buy that person food and clothes and buy a house for them and put them in it. And let's see which, which one, which divine source had the most power. My divine consciousness or you calling and begging for an outside external source deity to come and rescue this person, which will never happen. We already know that. I would definitely take him up on this challenge. Jesus, please provide Billy Carson the power to always be able to provide for homeless people. Amen. And then by Billy Carson's logic, I automatically win because he's going to be able to provide, right? I don't know. This kind of just came off a little rude in a way, I guess. If... If everyone was wealthy, they would be able to do that, but no, not everyone's in his position to where he can just pay for a person's house and their livelihood, basically. I just didn't really appreciate the way that he depicted the way to actually pray to a higher power. But I get what he's saying. Is it possible? Anything is possible. What you're asking is, is it probable? Okay, thank you. Is it probable to fly in this life with your physical body like Superman or Peter Pan? Yes, it is probable. But what degree of probability depends upon the person's belief systems and the reason why they might choose such a thing and the need for it to happen in their reality. Say you just wanted to fly just Idle for the curiosity fun doesn't usually do it. Would your belief system have to be powerful enough to overcome gravity? It's not about power, it's about clarity. Hmm. There has to be a clear reason in how it serves you to do so and how it may serve others for you to do so as well. There has to be a choice made within the idea of the exploration of a theme that is to the benefit of you and all concerned as to that happening. Now that's becoming more and more probable in your reality as you get a better handle on the idea of what consciousness is and what beliefs are all about and how they manifest your physical reality experience and the fact that it takes place within your consciousness and not really outside. Hmm. So the idea really is a vibratory one, a resonance one, a frequency one. In the sense of how it happens in our reality, one of the ways we began to realize that such a thing was highly probable was when we first recognized that what you call location is actually a property of the object itself, not a place in which an object resides. So when you know that location is a property of the object and you learn to redefine the vibrational variable in the equation, the energy equation of the object, then if the location happens to be 50 feet off the ground and you impose that vibratory resonance or change that vibratory resonance within the location variable in the equation of the object, then the object must, by definition, start to exist 50 feet off the ground because that's its new locational variable. So it's all about frequency, it's all about resonance, it's all about knowing what your energy signature is and how your beliefs can align themselves to generate the appropriate energy signature to manifest that particular kind of an experience. Thank you. Did that clarify it or muddy it up for you? Um, muddy. All right. <laughs> Let's simplify this idea. If there is a true, strong I'll put it this way, reason or need for this to happen, the probability becomes much, much greater that it will. Hmm. But you will find that many people wish for these things in a sense out of fascination or idle curiosity, but they really, 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 really don't need them to happen. I'm not going to argue and say that I do not believe what this individual is saying. If, if that was the case, you would think that there would be a lot of people out there 
that would be able to do the things that they want to do, such as fly. Why do we not have very many people out there flying? Is it because we are all blinded by the reality that we perceive? Or is it just not possible? And this individual is saying it's possible if you followed these laws of belief. What, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is something that can be done? Or do you think that it's not real? You're talking about a being that's so highly intelligent that he is one notch below the creator of the universe. His IQ is astronomical off the charts. A human is dumber than a rock to this entity. Life. And you're telling me that this entity with all this intellect, all this intelligence, all this power is going to follow every word that's written in this book to the T to its own demise. Yes. I said, you know, I have a problem with that. I don't think that's accurate. What I do believe is that this entity has helped to construct and organize this book in this particular format and way that it is so that the majority of the people on the planet would follow it and chase it and pray to him and follow it to their own demise. And his brain caught on fire. <laughs> what Christians don't understand is that they're actually following and chasing and praying to the actual Satan, the same one that they're actually running from. I I've always been curious about this. And I would like to ask, what is your thoughts on this subject? Do you truly believe that the Bible is true to its word? Or do you think that it could potentially be false information provided by evil forces to hold you back from true religion? I, I would really like to know. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you are interested in any of these clips, links will be in the description down below. Go ahead and check them out. They're in the order that we watched. And with that being said, have a good day.